So the last thing I want to show you, uh, I want to talk about going back to the Excel file, how um, brittle it can often be. So let's assume here I'm going to pull up this uh, spreadsheet again. Um, so we went from a bad format that didn't make uh, much sense for importing into a clean and tidy format. And I would strongly recommend uh, if you're trying to get information from say a client or a third party, don't expect them to give you the data you want in a format that's going to make any sense. I would strongly recommend creating your own tidy format or tidy Excel sheet and saying, please fill this out. That way uh, there's less cleanup on your side. Uh, so let's say that uh, you did that, you get uh, say more information later on in the design. And let's say it changed to something like this. So all that happened here was that we added a new, a new row called Frit and a new bit of information called Manufacturer. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal, right? This is all otherwise the exact same information. But if I were to now import revised format, let's, let's go back into Excel here. I'm gonna copy this down. And I think it is yelling at me probably because I have it open. Yeah, you can say it's open, so please close, not a problem. Sometimes those pop-ups hide. Okay, and let's type in revised format. There we go. So it still is nice and clean and tidy, but if I were to simply plug this into here, you'll see I'm getting an error. And that's because the import, or the um, all the different um, values that I had are very, very dependent on the row and column location, right? I said that the material is always path one and then cost low is always path two. Let's take a look at what path two is now. It's now the material name or the, uh, the manufacturer name. And that's why this is giving me an error because I'm trying to throw a text into a number. So be very cautious when you're importing data. It is incredibly um, based on the row and column because that's kind of what we did here, right? We split up the data into um, its corresponding parts. We have a few tools that can make this a little more robust, a little bit more flexible. And that's what we're gonna go through now. So let's copy this down. We're gonna show you, let's have this be what it was. Okay, so in this case, let's take a look at these titles. So if I'm expecting this to maybe change, and I always want to pull out cost low and cost high. And let's assume that's the case. Um, there's a really useful component. If you go under set, this um, member index is quite useful. So if I am looking at these uh, titles, and I'm actually going to flatten this, oops, create a text object and flatten these. What I'm gonna do here is say, uh, I want, um, if I'm trying to find the path branch, well, right now I hard coded this as say two, because I expect that to be cost low, but now cost low, um, actually that's, uh, the index is gonna be off by one because the path that it's uh, referring to is actually path three, right? Because it starts at branch one. So before it would have been at item one, but now it's at item two. I wanna find out exactly what item is this text at. So all I need to do is plug this into the set and then search for a member. In this case, I want to search for cost low. And it's going to give me nothing because I misspelled low text case matters. Bam. Now that I have this in here, it's able to go through and say index two has cost low in it. Now this I can use for my uh, for my branch path. So if I take this information, but I'm, I don't hard code it as branch um, two, but I actually take this index, and remember I said that it's gonna be off by one because this is index two, uh, but we start at branch one, so I just need to add a add one. So I really want branch three. So now I'm parametrically selecting the branch that gives me the cost low. So 
what I want to point out here is that there are flexible ways to read your data in from Excel to select uh, things based on other values that you have. And this member index is quite easy. So I'm saying, hey, look for the column that's called this and pull that in rather than finding it and hard coding in the number. So this might be a little bit more robust. And you can imagine you can do that for any of the, um, the other values that you have here. And that might make for a, a, an Excel interface that is a little bit more able to react to changes down the line. So in summary, in order to bring data into Grasshopper, it's very important that it be clean and tidy. So clean is all about in incorrect, inaccurate, incomplete, or irrelevant information. Never just trust the data that you pull in. You really need to go through, make sure it's correct. And tidy is all about the organization. As we showed through this tutorial, um, untidy information is very difficult to work with. And that tends to be caused by uh, data uh, Excel files that are meant to be read by people, not be read by code. Uh, so if you organize your data in this way with one variable per column, one entry per row, and one purpose or unit per table, it's going to become much more organized and you'll be able to leverage it using code much, much more easily. So clean and tidy data, very important. And once you have that set up, it's quite easy in Grasshopper to identify the values, manipulate them, create these new parameters that you want, and leverage them to create nice little data dashboards to give you that information um, as you're designing.